places. We're so happy that you're here to join us today. Just a quick reminder that we are doing communion. So whether you're watching online or you're here in the building, we encourage each and every one of you to participate with us.
cross you bore so I could live in the freedom you died for and now my life is yours and I will sing of your goodness forevermore worthy is your name Jesus you deserve the praise worthy is 
you, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord. When we mention the name of Jesus, darkness has to flee. Amen. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Power in your name. Hallelujah. There's power in that name. Hallelujah. Yes, there is power in the name of Jesus. He is our resurrected Savior. He's alive today. And the Holy Spirit is moving throughout this place to touch, to deliver, to resurrect us to new life. We can't make it through this life without Jesus, people. We need to turn to Him more than ever during these times. It's very, very difficult. But Jesus makes it worth it. He'll give you the peace. He'll give you the joy. He'll give you the hope. He'll give you the assurance to want to live, to want to move on. Give Him that opportunity today. The presence of God is certainly moving throughout this place. And we've come to the part of the service where we're going to share and take in the elements of communion. It's something that Jesus did on the night that He was betrayed. So you may be struggling with sin in your life. You may have come here today feeling like I'm just so distant from God. He wants to reconnect with you today. And he wants to put the past behind you. So with the elements of communion today, we have that opportunity to clear the slate. The Bible says, however, that we're to search ourselves. So give ourselves, give us a moment now to just search ourselves, to see what needs to be brought up, what needs to be trampled and put away forever as we take today's communion. You know, we could come to God and repent, but if we continually do the same thing, then there's no fruit that's coming out of our repentance. Jesus talked about fruit as we grow spiritually, but as we take communion, we need to, allow God to move and to destroy the sin in our life once and for all and repent and let the fruit be seen by God that we are trying we will do it with his help in Jesus name on the night he was betrayed Jesus took bread and when he had broke it he said this is my body which is broken for you do it in remembrance of me if you peel back that first tab and take the bread, this represents the broken body of Jesus. The pain that he bore on the cross for you and for me. He mentions, he says, this is my broken body. You know, you may have come here today broken, but he's here today to put the pieces together and to fix us so that we can walk out of here victorious and live a life that's pleasing to him. Father, as we take this bread, we pray for healing in our body. We pray for strength, Lord, those that are dealing with sicknesses. We pray in the name of Jesus that you would bring healing, for that's what your broken body has done for each and every one of us. Regardless, it could be a cold, it could be cancer. You're able to heal and to deliver in Jesus' name. Let's partake together. Jesus, in the same way, took the cup after supper and he said, this is the covenant with my blood that will be shed for you and that was shed for you and me. This little element symbolizes the forgiveness that Jesus will give us today. But we have to walk in that forgiveness every day and with his help, turn away from the constant sin that we keep that the enemy keeps throwing at us. Under this new covenant in Hebrews 8.12, it says that not only does Jesus forgive us, but he chooses, he chooses, the Bible says, to forget. He forgets our sin. A lot of times the enemy will remind us of our sin and bring things up from long ago. I've said it many times, if he's got to do that, then he's hurting for material for where you are today. Don't allow that negative thought to come in. Let the blood of Jesus run through your veins and allow his forgiveness 
to make you the person that you are in Jesus. Let's partake together. Thank you, Jesus, for the work on the cross. Thank you for the work on the cross that after you were killed and put in a grave, you rose victorious on that third day, hallelujah, to give us life, to give us hope, to give us peace, to give us victory, and ultimately to give us eternal life with you in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a great big hand. Hallelujah. Thank you, team. Awesome worship. You may be seated. Just a couple of announcements before pastor comes and delivers a great word. Uh, a couple of weeks, uh, there's a couple of flyers actually that's out in the lobby. I'll try to do a little bit of a juggling act here. But you'll see on November the 20th, there'll be a special meeting sponsored by Celebrate Recovery. If you're dealing with hangups, habits, and hurts, you're welcome to come because all of our ministries are gonna be invited here. It's gonna be a powerful service of, of the word, of song, uh, and you don't wanna miss it. So, and testimony as well. Also, a week later, and these flyers are out in the lobby. You can ask questions later on. They're out there for you. Uh, we're gonna have a Thanksgiving outreach on Saturday, November 27th. Uh, from the hours of 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. It's a drive-through where they'll be giving out uh, food. So you can be part of that. But please, spread the word. The uh, flyers are out in the lobby, and they'll be there to answer any questions that you may have. Before Pastor comes, I just want to say also, this week, November 11th, is Veterans Day. And we never want to let a Sunday service go by without honoring our veterans. So if you are a veteran, man or woman, and served in any of our armed forces that help keep our country safe and great, we want you to stand because we want to say thank you. And those from home, you could stand in your pajamas too, and we'll honor you as well. Thank you. Thank you. All you at home, thank you. Watching online, thank you. Thank you very much. And just one last thing, if you are currently serving in our armed forces, man, a woman, in any of our armed services, any branch of service, keeping our country safe, this great country that we live in, we want you to stand and we wanna just acknowledge you as well. Anyone serving? Anyone? Right here. Thank you. Thank you. If you're thank standing you. at home, thank you. Thank you for keeping our country safe. We appreciate that. Amen. Thank you. Hey, we appreciate your service. Um, we, the country that we have, it's not perfect, but you know what? It's a great country. It's a blessed country. And it's because of men and women that are doing what they have done. Those that have given their lives, those that are serving today, those that are actively serving, and those that, are, that have, uh, man, it's just so, pre we, we take things for granted so much sometimes. Uh, step out of this country and you will see that it is a huge difference. Said, not a perfect country, but um, but we are still a, a great country. Amen. I love the foundation and, and moving forward. And and hey, you know, I think we are at a place in in in, uh, in 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 our where we are as a nation, as a world, whatever. We we need revival. We need God's power and presence in our life. I believe there's that you know, what we've gone through as a uh, with the pandemic and all the things like that. How it has really jolted so many churches, not here but just around the world. When I talk to friends of mine from other countries and what they're going through with their churches and how difficult and challenging it is for many of them standing for their faith and believing and, and just just doing the normal stuff that we do here on a daily you know on a weekly basis uh, they literally put their lives on the line literally because of that um and and, and so we 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 miss that we you know it's so easy for us we go to church oh go to church oh i don't want to go to church today. it's okay you know and we watch online can do here and all these things we have it, we have all these things and they're, they're great nothing against any of those things uh, and sometimes because of that, we become very slack. We become very just coddled so much by it that we don't think about the fact of, that we really need God's power and presence to revive us in our life and move in our life and, and, and see his, that, that breath of life within us. And that, and, and that it's not just this thing that we're just going through the motions, but literally that our life is saying, God, I, I want to be connected with you. I want to, I, I, daily, that I know that I'm not just going through the motions, but this is a relationship that I have with you. 
you know, you take a marriage that, um, that it can be a year, it could be, you know, 40 years, and, and they could just, you know, it, it could just go into a point that you're just existing, you're there, you know, there's no life into it. And you know, every couple, I had a wedding this week, and uh, every couple I, I talk to, I always mention the fact is that you, you got to invest into that. It's one of the things I say in, in, in the, the, the actual ceremony, whether anybody listens or not, you know, in the ceremonies, most people are just like, okay, when's it over and when we get into the reception? But, you know, but, you know, a part that I always try to point out is the fact that, that you have to invest into this. You know, it doesn't just happen. You know, your spiritual walk doesn't just happen. You invest into that, you know, and, um, you know, and I believe on, on both those things is, you know, and maybe you said, well, you know, today I, I, I believe that, you know, I want to challenge you with something that really stir up where you are to challenge your faith, probably in a way that you didn't expect. Maybe you came and said, I, I just want something, I'm here today, I want something deep. I want some, Pastor, just give me something so deep, deep. I want deep today. Okay, real deep, so deep. And I get that, I understand that. I think we need all levels of, uh, of just things, that digging into things and growing in God's word. Maybe you're wanting a profound truth that is going to blow your mind today. Maybe you want to find out how to beat up the devil and give him a black eye. I don't, I don't know what, whatever you came here for today. And that's all fine, nothing against all that. But, you know, the fact is, is if I'm so busy looking for deeper truth and not doing the main truths, I'm missing it. Thanks for those two hums there. <clears throat> Because it, yes, thank you. Because actually, it's so true. We can be so busy trying to go to the next level and do this and be this. I'm gonna chase the devil down. You know, you can be so busy chasing the devil that you forget to follow Jesus. Man, I, you know, I remember talking this one time. They're like, "Well, you know, everywhere I, everywhere I go, I'm just casting the devil out. I'm looking for the devil. I'm not looking for the devil." I'm supposed to be following Jesus. If my eyes on the devil, then my eyes are not on Jesus. Oh, yes, it is. I have them both ways. No, you don't. Because the devil will lead you on such a rabid trail in your life. If you give him attention, he will give you a party. All right? He'll give you an adventure. I'll never forget. I was talking to someone a couple, oh, a couple weeks ago. We were talking about this. And um, there, uh, there used to be... Um, I've said this before, but uh, I mean, there used to be on, on late, uh, late at night on one of the, the free cable channels. I guess there's like the, the public broadcast channels, and there's uh, there always these ministries on. And I'm not, listen, it probably sounds I shouldn't be saying it like this way, but I'm not making fun of it. But I just, I look, remember, I woke up one night, and the, the TV was on this a long time ago. And, you know, here's this, this, there was this church, and they, you know, they're filming it, and whatever, it's like that. And they're casting the devil out of somebody, and, and they're like interviewing the person. Well, what's your name? And why are you here? I want you to, I'm like, why are you spending, so they spent 30 minutes interviewing this person that was possessed or maybe pretending I don't know what the case was you know who knows maybe they just thought let me go get on tv you know act possessed you know you never know people listen I've been pastoring for a long time people do a lot of weird stuff okay some things are real some things are completely made up and because everybody says that God told me they, it doesn't always mean that God told them okay that's one thing I've learned is they, they sometimes like yes God did tell them and there's a lot of people that just want to manipulate people by saying God told me to tell you this that you have to do that you need to know, you need to have a relationship for yourself with God to know what God is saying and what God is not saying. And anybody that comes to me and says, well, God told me to tell you this, then, you know, I'll, t I'll this is what I do. I'll take it. I'll put it on the shelf. I'll say, okay, God, you're the one that's speaking to my life. If this is from you, you'll let me know. If it's not, it's just going to sit on the shelf and rot over there because it's not for me. And I'm not saying that mean in any way. I'm just simply saying that we have to, we have to be about understanding the balance in our spiritual walk. We need to be on fire for God. We need to experience, we need revival. We need revival in our life. We need revival in our churches. We have been drugged through the mud and beat up for the last two years. It has been like the last year and a half, two years, whatever. I can't even remember anymore. It's such a blur. And it just seems like it just keeps going on. And the more pastors I talk to and hear this stuff and, you know, people are going here and people are all over the place and people are not following. I mean, it's just like crazy, but the devil's having a heyday. So you know what? That just tells me that God has something greater and bigger and that we're going to see God move in a greater way in our world, in our nation, in our churches, and in our families. But we can't miss the basics of what we're supposed to do as Christ followers. Okay, so that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about something that is such a profound theological truth that Jesus identified it as the second greatest commandment. And everything in God's word, according to Jesus, hinges upon these two things. That sounds pretty deep to me. But you know what so happens is because we hear something so many times or are aware of it, we don't think of it as deep. 
But when Jesus says that everything that we talk about, everything we do, everything we read in, in the word of God, the law of God, as he mentioned about the law and the prophets, says in all those things that everything that we teach and read and follow in that hinges. It's like the, what does that mean? You, you, you guys all have kitchens most likely or a, a hinged door. You, the door you walked in today, the glass doors that you came through earlier or going to your house or apartment or condo, whatever the case, it's the door is on a hinge. If the door is not on a hinge, the door is going to fall off, right? The only way the door swings, the only door, way the door stays in position is because it's hinged to the, the door jam, okay, or the, the framework. And so that hinge holds the door and the cabinet or the, the house or whatever it's connected to, holds those things together, which allows the door to swing, to move, to let you go in, to let you go out. And Jesus says, this, this thing here that we're going to talk about today, some of you probably guessed what it is, this thing is the hinge that makes everything else work. Your deeper walk with God, your ability to reach the world for Jesus, your life to walk and flow in all that you do, this is the hinge that makes that work. Otherwise, it's just going to fall off. I mean, we've had that with the cabinets in our kitchen I don't even know how old the cabinets are because when we moved there 20 something years ago they were already we got them from somebody that was throwing them out and we took them we sanded them and they worked it's like that and, and now they're basically at the point they're like we are about to die <laughs> but you know they won't shut and all these different things are going on and I'm like okay these things are I, I don't want to buy cabinets but they're on their you know one day one day I keep saying every year we're going to do it and it doesn't happen it's been probably like six years as I've been saying that we're going to do this, but I'm just like, the hinges are still working, the doors are still closing, sort of, kind of. We're just going to keep going with what we have. But there was one time that what happened, the hinges came apart, and I opened it up, and the whole top of the door just kind of fell off. The cabinet door fell off. And I had to take it and reattach it on there. And our life will fall apart. Our life will break down if we don't stay hinged to the things that Jesus says that hinges us to those things. Amen. So let's dive right into this. Let's look at this. Um, and, and what we see about the fact is that it's, it's, it's all about loving where you live. And that's what we're talking about, to love where you live. Today, next week, we're going to be talking about this. Love where you live. I'm not talking about because you live near a park or you live in a nice zip code or you got beautiful trees around. That's not the love where you live we're talking about. We're talking about how we demonstrate love where we live. Not because we want to talk about it, but because Jesus said this is an important thing we have to talk about. Let's read it. Let's go back in there. Matthew chapter 22, verse 34. This is what he says. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they came together, and one of them, an expert in the law, asked a question to test him. So this, here's this, this guy. He's like, okay, I'm going to try to test Jesus here. And so he asks him a question. He says, teacher, which command in the law is the greatest? And he said to him, Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and the most important command. The second is like it. In other words, it's just as important as the one I just gave you. And that is to love your neighbor as yourself. And he says, all the law and the prophets depend or are hinged on these two commands. It's so simple that sometimes what happens is we don't even really comprehend what it's saying. We don't take, because it's like one of those things that you sit down and you pray for your food. You know, I remember as a kid, you've heard me talking about this. Some of you may be the same thing. You know, we had a little prayer that we always prayed as kids. You know, Father, thank you for this food. Bless our bodies. You know, give us, I can't even remember because I, I can say, Father, thank you for this food. Bless our bodies. Amen. It kind of evolved into that thing. It wasn't a prayer to actually stop for a moment and say, Father, thank you, because what we're eating is because you have provided this, that you made it possible, that you provided not only from the farmer that grew it, Father, to the, to the distributions that got here, to the money to buy it, to the person that made it, and for me to sit here and eat this, Father, thank you, because you provide the bread in our lives. You provide the sustenance within our life, and we are grateful for that. It's amazing how that's what we're thinking about in praying for the food, and it can completely disintegrate down to Father, the food in Jesus' name, Amen. Are we ready to eat now? Because it's hot. We got to eat this fast. You know, we got to pray fast. You know, and when you're Thanksgiving, we're coming up Thanksgiving in a few weeks, if you you know, and then then of course you have people, and then you know, then you get real spiritual. You actually are going to pray over the food before you eat. You know, because some of you don't even think about you know, like well, I pray, I pray for the whole year, all the food I'll eat in the year. But so you're going to pray on that day. And you always know you don't pick the person that prays the longest for Thanksgiving meal. Like, see, we had a couple pastors in my family, and it's like we just knew 
who not to ask to pray for the food. And I, I, I love my uncle, one of my uncles. One of my uncles, I won't say which uncle. I love one of my uncles. And oh, when we pray, he could pray. He could, and I'm just like, I'm so hungry. And you're smelling that food and you're just like, when is he going to stop praying for this food so we can eat this food already, you know? Anyways, that has absolutely nothing to do with the message, but I, guess I just threw it in there. I don't know why I talked about that, but just a, a Thanksgiving thing to know, don't pick the person that prays the longest for the food so on Sunday. Anyways, so as we go through and we're talking about this is the fact that Jesus is saying that the, everything that we do hinges upon these things. It's connected on these. We've been, we've been given these two powerful commands as, as Christians. The one is the Great Commission. That's to go and make disciples. That, that is Jesus' parting words that, that not for, the, for, the, for his followers, but for us today, is to go into all the world. That means, that means your neighborhood, that means your city, that means your state, your, 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 your country, the world. As a church, we, we do that. We're reaching our city. We're reaching co- other countries, re- helping other churches in other countries around the world. What you do and your support, your giving helps those on a monthly basis or projects and things that we do. You know, you'll, never, you'll probably never ever meet those people, but the fact is you will in heaven one day. There was an old song a long time ago. I love the fact that someone was called Thank You. Someone would come, come up to you and said, Thank you for giving. Thank you for doing this. Thank you. I'm here. In other words, I'm here. I'm in heaven because you did something. And you're doing that. You're, you're touching people's lives. We're called to go into all the world and make disciples. Go and make disciples. But the second one is this, and that's the great commandment that we just read, and that is to love God and to love people. The love God is easy, right? The, the love God part, really, we don't really have to go too much on that, but the love people part becomes very icky, awkward, difficult. Because people are messy. Hello. Not you. Of course not you. We're talking about somebody else here today. Because you're perfect. You got it all together. You have no quirky things. No, we all have quirky stuff. We're all difficult. We're all challenging in some way. We have something that drives people up the wall. But, but it, he says here, it's a, it's a commandment that he gives. In fact, as we just read, Jesus said that it hinges. Everything that we do hinges on loving God and loving people. That every Christ follower can help bring people far and near closer by understanding the biblical principle of neighboring who's your neighbor that the understanding of being able to love people far and close it's easy to love people close because you don't see them that much the person that you see every day when you walk out to get in your car or step out in the hall of your apartment or your condo, or whatever, and you walk in there and there they are and you know they're watching you through the peephole because they're watching everything all the time because they're watching when you come in, they're watching when you go out because they're just the, they're the I'm not saying nosy neighbor, but they're the, they're the patrol of the neighborhood, okay? Sometimes you love to have the patrol because you know, you know what, you know, you know. Anyways, let's just leave it alone, just, you know. How to be a Christ follower, following Jesus, making a difference in people's lives. You know, all the things we talk about, growing deeper in God, loving God, following him, and, and just being a, 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 a believer that there's a fresh presence of God in, his, in their lives and moving. All those things are great, but what hinges on that happening is how I love my neighbor. Hmm. Didn't want to think about that way. Because it's easy to do all that and not love our neighbor. And so, you know, God calls us, calls you, calls me to love your neighbor. It's a command. It's not an option. This is not something that he says, think about it and see what you, see what you decide. It's not that. He says, we've got to love God, which is easy to do, right? And then he throws the kicker in, Jesus does, and love your neighbor as yourself. He doesn't just say love your neighbor. He describes how to love your neighbor. He says, love the neighbor the same way you love yourself. And some of us love ourselves a whole lot. Okay? And he says, the way that you love yourself is the way you're supposed to love your neighbor. Gosh, that just kind of makes it very challenging. Because it's not easy to do that. Because again, coming back, people are difficult. People say stuff that are annoying. I've been a pastor for all these years. People say stuff that are annoying. Trust me. They don't think. They just, bleep, just vomit it out there. Right? And you've had it, you've experienced it at work, you've experienced it in your neighborhood, you've experienced it in life. It's part of what it is. It's part of, of being human that we say stupid stuff sometimes that we don't think before we speak. And we act in a way sometimes that we don't think before we act. 
and now you got a wall and someone's mad and this person's offended and all that kind of stuff. And Jesus is in the middle of all that. Hey, oh, by the way, love your neighbor. I don't want to love that neighbor. They're a pain in my rear end, right? I don't want to love that person. It's about the proximity. So we talk about what, who is our neighbor. That was one of the questions that's asked. Who is our neighbor? When we talk about neighbors, so many times we think of our neighbor as the coworkers, the friends, the, 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 the church family, the people that we like is our neighbor, but not necessarily thinking about that it has to do with the people that live right near me, two doors down, next door, the house behind me, the house in front of me, the building across the street. We don't think about those things, but the word that's used in Matthew 22 and also used again in Luke chapter 10 for neighbor means, you don't have to be a scholar to figure it out, (laughs) the word is defined as near to, people that you are near to. A neighbor is someone that's close by, actually means neighbor, as we would think of a neighbor. Whether it's person next to us or, yes, definitely a coworker, definitely all the other things we talked about, but it also means the people that we live by. Because we could argue the point, well, yeah, you know, my, my neighbor's my coworker, my neighbor's this or that. And, and, and yes, but he's also talking about the people that we live beside. And that's the part that we say, that, I don't like that. I don't like my neighbor. I don't even know who my neighbors are. Be honest, we lived, I lived in the same, on the same house for over 20 years. And there's still people that I don't, I'm like, what is their name again? You know, for one whole year, the guy across the street, I called him a, the wrong name for an entire year. An entire year. I don't even remember what it was that I heard someone call his name. I was like, who are they talking about? I'm like, oh, that's the guy across the street. I've been calling him the wrong name. He keeps waving. And I keep calling him the same name. And actually, we, they had a block party. Uh, gosh, I don't know if it was this one or last year. And I, was, I, went, I went, one I actually went to, and um, which I'm talking about neighbors, and I'm just as guilty as what I'm talking to you guys about because I, I just thought oh, about the crowds and all that stuff. And I'm like, oh, people I don't know and try to remember names. And I'm so bad with names. I'm like, uh, they tell me a name. I'm like, oh, what did they say their name was? I don't remember what it was. I got to rhyme it with something, you know, like so I can remember what it is because I'm so bad with names. You know, I don't know if anybody else does that, but it's like, Pastor Peter, I, I, I know, Pastor Peter, I, I was messing his last name up the longest time. And he's like, it's easy. It's Hagel. Bagel Hagel. <laughs> so he just remember Bagel Hagel. I was like, and I was like, wow. So like for the first next two months, I just looked at him and saw a bagel. And then I was like, bagel Hagel. Until finally I got it, you know, like I, that's how bad I am. I'm seriously, I'm so bad. And I had someone come up and test me one time. They're like, so tell me your name. I'm like, you're seriously not doing this to me, are you? Because I told everybody I'm horrible with names. But anyway, so finally I told, I told my neighbor, I said, I said, you probably don't know this. I said, maybe you do. But I called you the wrong name for like over a year. He goes, I didn't even, I didn't even know it. <laughs> I was like, I think you're just being nice. I think you didn't know I was like calling you the wrong name. But I think we're all guilty of not having that connection with the people around us. When I say connection, it doesn't mean that you're having dinner with them all the time. It, it may, may be great friends, it might not. But the fact is that loving our neighbor is more than just, you know, trying to have this, this it may not even be a close friendship, but to be able to d- demonstrate Jesus in our neighborhood. Which so many times we don't want to do that because that's where we live. We don't want to, we don't look stupid where we live. Right? And I get that. I understand that. And so, you know, but what if, and I think about it this way, what if God has sovereignly placed you among your neighbors? That changes the picture, doesn't it? Like, God, you, I thought I picked this place to live in, but actually you put me in this place here to touch the lives of the people that are around me right now. Well, Pastor, I don't have it all together. That's okay. None of us have it all together, so get over that already. God's going to work through you where your strength is, and even in the things that you're not strong in, he works through. But if God actually placed me exactly where I am because in some way he wanted me to be able to show Jesus to my neighborhood. And that doesn't mean I got to go carry the big ton, you know, two-ton Bible, walk through there, blast worship music, open up all the windows and, and you know, scream, thank you, Jesus, outside every morning. Okay, that's not what I'm saying. Because if you want to bring the neighbors in, now they're definitely running. You know what I love, the example of Jesus? That the, that the, the people that were farthest from God wanted to go to Jesus. Like, they hunted Jesus down. Zacchaeus, who was a horrible, he was a tax collector, he was a bad guy. 
He's ripping everybody off. Everybody hated him. And he's climbing up in a tree so he can watch Jesus. And Jesus comes up and says, hey, you know what, Zach? He goes, get down from that tree. I'm going to your house to have dinner today. Come on, let's go. And everybody's like, oh, oh my goodness, my goodness. Oh, blah, 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 blah. oh Jesus, he's, don't I know who Zacchaeus? Zacchaeus is a tax collector. He's like a traitor. He's like stealing money from us. We hate Zacchaeus. But Jesus is showing them that Zacchaeus is your neighbor. Amen. Maybe you have been placed where you are, not because you picked it, because God put you there. And just maybe by your kindness, by your acts, what you do, how you live, they're watching you. Neighbors watch. They're watching. Maybe that's sometimes that's why you, maybe you're afraid to tell them that you love Jesus because they've been watching you. <laughs> I got to go three blocks over to, to shine Jesus' light because if I tell them I'm a Christian, they're like, no, you're not. <laughs> you're more satanic than I am. It's like, and you say you love Jesus? <laughs> not that you're satanic. I'm just simply saying. You know. I, I think you get the picture. In Luke's account of this and that we talked about, Luke's account of this conversation, one of the guys actually asked Jesus. I mean, he did it, just that the one writer didn't put it in there, but, you know, but he was focusing on the direction. But Luke writes it in, and he says this. He's, the guy asked Jesus specifically who qualifies as a neighbor. And Jesus responds with the parable of the Good Samaritan, which we talked about. We talked about that know, a few months ago or something like that. But it's a great, it's a great parable. We've probably all heard about the parable of the, of the Good Samaritan. Even I, I've seen it, I've seen the, the, the story of the Good Samaritan in magazines that were not even religious in any capacity talk about the story of the Good Samaritan. The world knows the story of the Good Samaritan. And we look at the story of the Good Samaritan, this, you know, what happens is the guy that's asking him what he's doing. The big idea of the Good Samaritan is that people were trying to get around caring for their neighbors. The Samaritan and, and, and the Jewish guy. They didn't talk. They didn't like each other. They were anti, you know. But here's a Samaritan helping this Jewish guy that just got beat up and it's at a death's door. And Jesus is using this illustration to the, to the Jewish guy that's asking the question, and that's just like sandpaper <laughs> going against each other. When the guy says, you want to know who your neighbor is? Your neighbor is whoever you're close to, even the Samaritan that you're prejudiced against. They hated each other. And Jesus takes two, two opposing forces and says, you guys are neighbors. You don't like each other. You won't, even, you won't even walk through each other's territory. A Jewish person at that time would never walk through Samaria because they despise the Samaritans so bad. And Jesus pulls out and makes the hero of the story the Samaritan. And so what is he doing? He's challenging. So that's who your neighbor is. The guy wanted to redefine his neighbors by those that believe, in my opinion, those that believe like him, those that dress like him, those that talk like him, and those who looked like him. That's how he defined who his neighbor is. See, those that he wanted to be neighborly to. See, to be honest with you, you don't get to pick your neighbors. Yeah, I just found out, like, what house next to me, they're, they're selling their house. And I was like, no, they've been, they've been there since we moved in. And I love them. They're, they're amazing people. And uh, I'm like, oh, it's going to be rough, you know, because I, you know, I, I'm going to miss them. But I was all like, God, who are you going to put next to us? <laughs> it's like, you know, because that's also a big question, you know. The house on the other side, they, they moved. They're, they're great people. You know, they're, they're good and stuff like that and, and all these things. But then they got these. I'm like, oh, we're going to miss them so much. And you know, but, but when I was studying for this and thought about the fact that, God, maybe you placed us exactly where we are on purpose, not because we wanted to live in this house, but because you wanted us to live in this house. So I need to be a light to whoever goes in that house. So my prayer is that, God, whoever goes in that house, there's something in our lives that's going to be able to shine into their life, that I can be a neighbor to whoever's in that house, no matter who they are, you know? You know, like I know in one of the houses by us, we, you know, in the summer, we have to, like, close the window on there. We can't leave it open because the marijuana pours in so much that we're all floating in the house, you know. I'm just like, oh, God. That was, that was before it was legal, okay? So it's like, can't even imagine now what this next summer is going to be like. So, woo, hallelujah. Pastor, so happy today. What's going on with you? I'm feeling good. I'm playing, uh, you know, reggae music and, you know, Bob Marley. Um, you know, which I like Bob Marley, by the way. Anyways. I'm getting very sidetracked. But anyways, 
this guy wanted to redefine his neighbors. We do the same thing. We try to redefine our neighbors. Or, or let me say this. We want to define who we want to call our neighbors instead of, oh, I can't be neighbors with them. <laughs> Definitely not their neighbors. Yeah, you are. The heart of the answer is that there is no one, no matter how different from you, who exempts you from the call to love your neighbor. Oh, you know, I don't have anything to relate to them. That is okay. I mean, there was a, oh gosh, I'm trying to think. There was a picture. Oh, okay, I should have. I hate when I pop out illustrations and I can't remember the whole story. It was the first moment. But I remember there was a picture. It was like one of those ones that they, uh, they, uh, you know, the photo cameras, like when you're driving, stuff like that. And it was one they had posted, and it was like the two completely different people. It, one, the one person was like, I forgot who they were. They're very, it, oh, it was Pat Boone, and it wasn't Ozzy Osbourne, but it was another singer like Ozzy Osbourne, and they were in the car together. It was, the other guy was actually a Christian now. He's given his life to Christ. But the two of them were in, if you don't know Pat Boone, some of you are like, Pat who? You know, but some of you know, you got to dig deep. You got to dig way back from Pat Boone. But anyways, Pat Boone was like, you know, straight lays, like everything perfect. I mean, just, you know, just, you know, a long time ago, he was a performer. He was also a believer. And this other guy, and I don't remember the other Bob, Bob Zombie? Rob, Rob Zombie. That's who it was. Because I remember, and it was like, and he had, he had like tattoos all over the place. And I mean, nothing against that. But he was, he, was a, he was a rocker and all this stuff like that. And the two of them together, they were like, they were like the, the sun and the moon together in the car. Who's your neighbor? It's not about who you pick as your neighbor. See, maybe God wants to connect you with people that you never thought you could be in the same room with together. And wants us to look beyond that and say, you know what? I need, I need to fix my heart to just see the fact is, God, who do you want me to be my neighbor? Who do you want me to be a neighbor to? And so, obviously, Jesus wants us to love more than just the people that are next door, but it still includes the people next door. See, what if you looked at the people around you as if they were placed near to you for a reason? That God has placed you next to the person to love them, as we've talked about. See, when we look at it in that capacity, that you were placed in your neighborhood for a reason, so that you'd be neighbors with people that you'd never think that you were, just so that they can see Jesus through you. And that doesn't mean you walk in there and you're cramming Jesus down their throat either, because if you do that, their neighbors are not even going to talk to you. Come on. Amen? I think there's a balance in that. You know, there's a balance in, in, in how we reach out to people. That, and, and listen, this, you know, it's one of those things. It's like, it's like well, I'm just, I'm, thank God I'm just going to go in there and become a believer with it. I'm going to get them saved and drop them and leave them and go on to the next person. No, 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 no. We're talking about relationship here. Loving God, loving people. Loving people is relationship. It's not I love you today, but drop you tomorrow. Amen? It's not a little quest. Okay, got one saved today. Don't know what they're doing today, yesterday, but I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know what they're going to do next week, but I'm going on the next person, you know. No, 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 no. It's kindness. Loving our neighbor is also the second part of this is kindness. What does it mean to love your neighbor? Sometimes we overlook the practical idea of loving, but the bottom line of loving our neighbors is this. God's called us to invest into our neighbors, to sacrifice for our neighbors if necessary, ultimately to show the kindness of God to our neighbors, I was watching this video. I wanted to show it today. I couldn't. It, I, I, it was all good when I was reading all the legal mumbo jumbo of what we could show and what we couldn't show. And everything was fine. I'm like, okay, I can show this. I can show this to get to the bottom. And they said, you, cannot broadcast, you can't broadcast it on your website. You can't. I'm like, oh, man, you just ripped it right out from underneath me. But it was a great video of this lady who basically, so typical of most of us, myself included, you just kind of get so busy with your own life, you're coming and going, and you don't, you don't know the people around you and stuff like that. And, you know, her kids and her, her husband and, and herself, and they, it's just like we've lived here for so many, a number of years, we don't even know anybody around. And in this video, they were interviewing her, and she says, but, you know, one day, you know, our, their church was talking about loving your neighbor and, and how you love your neighbor. What can you do to reach out? And, and she says, you know, so I was like, what can I do? And she says, you know, I make really good tacos. And she says, you know what? I'm going to make a bunch of tacos. And I'm just going to walk around and to my neighbors. And, you know, they were having some garage sales or something like that. And, and, and she went out and she just made a big bag of uh, tacos and she gave it to this family. And, and some, this family, my name is so-and-so, just want to, just you know, I love making tacos and I want to, you know, help you with this. And they're still hot. And they were breakfast tacos. And, you know, and she was going around. And, and, before, and so before you know it, like all these people, they got to know each other and they're talking and all these different things. And 
she didn't have to, she wasn't slamming them with Jesus down their throat, but she was introducing herself and the love of Jesus shining out of her. That gives an entrance for Jesus to have a voice in somebody's life. And so I'm just going to say, oh yeah, let me just pray for you. Hit you, whack over the head with the Bible. Get saved, you're going to hell if you don't, and I'm out of here. No. Loving people is not beating them up. I mean, Jesus didn't beat them up. Look at Jesus. Jesus is going to Zacchaeus. He says, I'm going to, I'm going to go to your house to have dinner today. He didn't say, Zacchaeus, get that tree. You're going to hell if you don't accept God right now. No, he said, come on, let's go eat. Let's go, let's go, let's go hang out together for a little bit. How do we be a neighbor in our lives? And that starts with the seed. It's, it's trusting that what you can't see, that you can't see, you, see, you know, you, you plant a seed, you, you don't know what's happening in that. You can't see the progress that's taking place, but it's trusting that God is working in. It means getting to know the people around us because they're worth getting to know. And sometimes it may be small stuff, sometimes it may be a great friendship, but the fact of being able to connect with people, that happened to me the other day. You know, neighbors across the street, and I forgot what was, they came through, they tore up our street, they're doing all the, the gas companies do all these different things all around, and they were tearing, we were one of the cities, they were, they were ripping up everything and changing our gas meters outside, and it's just, it's a giant mess all over the place, and, and they tore up my neighbor's yard across the street, and they're across the street, so I don't really, I see them, I kind of wave every now and then, I see them like once a year kind of stuff, and and I know, I think we had, Andrew and I were home, we had ordered like, I had, no, picked up food or ordered food, I don't know, ordered food, it's a, like we ordered burritos. So we got burritos because I didn't have time to go get it, and so, so they come, and, and he's, I said, I'm gonna go get the burritos. I went out there, you're outside, I went and picked it up, and I saw my neighbor, I waved at him, and I walked across, I'm talking to him, and Andrew, I see him looking at the door like 35, 40 minutes later, he's like, where are you? And I went over and I started talking to my neighbor. I've talked, that was the most I've talked to them in the 20-something years that we've been across the street from each other. Just because I walked across the street and said, wow, you must have had a giant gopher in this yard. <laughs> you chewed up everything. And we laughed and we started talking. You see, I mean, I could have done that. So, and I, I said to them, I, I apologize. I said, I'm so sorry. We see each other all the time. I'm going to wave sometimes. And I said, you know what? I really enjoyed this conversation we had. We were like, literally, it was like 30, 40 minutes we were talking. Like, it got dark, and Andrew's like, did he get raptured? Where, where is he? He's like, <laughs> did someone rob, steal him? Where, where is he? He's got the burritos. Where's the burritos? Where's dad? You know, it's like, what's happening? <laughs> so, but that little step across that street made all the difference in the world in that relationship. It starts with a seed. It means listening as much as it does talking. Sometimes it's not about you. Oh, I got a witness. Jesus, Jesus, Holy Spirit, Shandai, Shandai. You don't know. Just listen. Sometimes just demonstrating Jesus is just giving someone a vo a, a, an opportunity to hear them out. Let them talk. It's, it's letting the Holy Spirit do the work. Amen. Sometimes we don't, you know, the Holy Spirit sitting sit back saying, when you're done, I'll step in, but you're just so busy taking the, the, trying to shine like the star, I can't do anything here. We need to step back and let God. Jesus tells us, love the neighbor, love your neighbor as yourself. And we think about that, how much activity that, that, that focuses around our comfort in our own personal care. And I'm not saying anything against that. The reason why he's saying that is because the fact is that God knows you're going to take care of yourself. You're going to provide for yourself. You're going to, you're going to, you know, you're going to walk out the door and you're going to look the, the best that you think you can possibly. Maybe not. I don't know. But whatever. But you're, you, however you're content, your care is, this is it. I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm going out the door. But what would it be like if we, sh if we showered that much love that we shower on ourselves on somebody else? And he says to love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah, you know, I love the fact that as a church, as a way, we're, we're intentional about meeting the needs of our people. This, this year, that's one of the things we started to do, and we've been reaching out, making a huge difference. Uh, coming up, one of the things that, when the announcement was that we're, the meals and different things we're going to be handing out. It's another big Thanksgiving outreach that we're going to do, reaching out people in a way. Um, but we cannot individually and simultaneously neglect to be kind to those that are near us in everyday life. We say, as a church, yeah, we're doing this or this. Okay, but what do we do individually? In reaching people. The big truth is that people around you matter immensely to God. 
And have you ever thought about the, those two commands, how they're connected, love God and love people? We love God with everything within us because, because God first loved us. In the story of the Good Samaritan, you, you see Jesus as the role of the Samaritan, a stranger who has absolutely no obligation whatsoever to help someone who could have, he could have considered an enemy. Yet, he steps outside of his own rights, gives his life for us, and that's the heart of the gospel. And, and, and when I say people matter immensely to God, I'm also saying that, that you immensely matter to God. You matter to God greatly, so much that he sent Jesus. And listen, if you don't know him, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, it is not a religious experience, it is a relationship experience. It's not about joining a church. It's about opening up your life to an invitation to say, Jesus, come into my life. I want you in my life. Forgive me of my sins, God. I embrace, I accept that Jesus came and died for me, paid the price for me, for my sins and my life to, make a, to build a bridge, a relationship for me to have a relationship with you, God. And I didn't even do anything. I can't earn it. There's nothing I can work to make it happen. I can't give enough. I can't do enough. I can't sacrifice enough for it. It's just like receive it. I take it, I grab it, I embrace it and let that life be the life of Christ inside of me. And let me say this, today, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, or if you're watching, you do not know him as your Lord and Savior today. Online, you can follow up that and we'll pray with you. There's things on there you can connect to and, and, and then we'll lead you in the prayer. We'll to pray with you. We'll reach out to you. For those of you here, man, come up front. Our prayer team would love to pray with you. It's not joining a church. It is, it is opening a relationship in your life that will transform your life forever. It's like a hope, a peace, a joy, a strength that will work in your life. And, and so when, when I say that people matter immensely to God, we understand that, he, that I matter immensely to him. Maybe how many of us have you know, been so busy in our lives that we're you know, chugging spiritual Red Bulls and we're just like, yeah, I'm, I'm loving Jesus today. You know? I'm, not, listen, I'm not making fun, okay? I'm just, I know it sounds like I am, but I'm, I'm really honestly not. But, you know, you're, you're amped up, you're fighting, you're shouting at the devil, you're, you're tucked away in your prayer closet all day, you're digging deep, 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 and even deeper to get a deeper truth, the deeper truth. You're so spiritual that even Jesus wakes you up as your personal alarm clock in the morning. That's how spiritual you are. Again, I'm not making fun of you. I'm just kind of playing around with that. And yes, you love God with all that you have, but you've never lifted a finger to love your neighbor. And I want to be brutally honest with you. You're missing it. You've missed the boat. I run into people that are like, like oh yeah, on, on Instagram. Sometimes I just can't even watch Instagram and Facebook. They're like, oh, fight the devil. Yes, wave my flag, hit my sword. I'm woo, tearing down the devil's leg, stuff like that. I can't help but think. So how, how you love your neighbor today? Because everything you're talking about hinges on if you love your neighbor because if you don't love your neighbor, what you're doing is just a puff of air, in my opinion. Because it's got to be connected because it's a command. Go into all the world, make disciples, love God, love people. Okay? And then everything else comes after that. Now, I'm sure that probably will offend somebody. It always does. But you know what? I didn't say it. Jesus did. Yeah, I said the other stuff. I said the joking stuff, yeah. And I understand that. Yeah, I, I believe in standing and ground, knowing who we are as a believer and, and against the attacks of the enemy. Of course I do. But if that's all I want to focus on, and I can't focus on the, the things that Jesus says, the Great Commission, go in to make disciples, and the Great Commandment to love God and love people, this is not a special ops mission where you just swoop in and swoop out. It's a relationship. There's a, there's a saying, it's actually, I forgot the guy that said it, but one time ago, and then Johnny Cash put it in another person. Like, Johnny who? Johnny Cash. Some of you know Johnny Cash, some of you don't. He was way before my time, but I still remember him, okay, as a little kid. But he, it was said, so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. We can so, be so heaven, 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 that we miss the person that is lying on the side of the road, desperate for someone to reach out. Yes, and give them Jesus, but demonstrate Jesus to help them get back up so then they can receive Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen? I don't know why the American church misses that. You go to other countries, they understand. If you're going to preach the gospel, you've got to put food in their stomach, help them get 
better, give them some medicine to get healthy and move forward, help them kind of get out of the pit and the mire and the sewage, literally sometimes the sewage that they're living in. And you know what? You do that, they want Jesus all the way because they saw that somebody cared and they saw Jesus in you. American church, the Western churches, so many times we want to beat people down and you know, all these other things and we miss the people that are hurting. Church needs to be the church that loving our neighbor. Amen? Reaching beyond. How do you do that? I don't know. There's all kinds of ways we can do that. How do we, how do we reach out? How do we connect to our neighbor? I, I know I went way beyond my time, you know, time, but we got plenty of time. The service ain't no, we're good. We're good. You're good. Okay. You can pray for your neighbors. Because some, some of your neighbors, you may not know it, but are going through some really difficult situations. They may look like on the surface that everything is good because they want to look like they got it together, but they are crumbling on the inside. And they need you to pray for them, even if they don't know that you're praying for them. Amen? Because what in that prayer time, God can put someone on your heart and you don't understand why and you don't need to know all the reasoning, but he's put somebody on your heart and you're praying for them and there's going to be a, either a casual conversation or something's going to take place or you're going to cross paths in some way that God's going to work in a way to be able to use you to touch their life. But you know what? You're not going to be, you don't even know it unless you start praying for them. The sensitivity to the Holy Spirit working in your life, maybe an act of kindness, like the lady that was making tacos, just handing them out to people. Just my, 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 my grandmother, she's, uh, you know, after my, after my mom's died, uh, mom died, um, my grandfather remarried, and she's, you know, I've known her longer than my, you know, previous grandmother that passed away. And she's an incredible woman. She is, gosh, she is in her late 80s now, I believe. And she is, lives in a retirement community uh, by the church that she attends. And she loves to bake. And she... We'll get in her car, she'll make and bake and bake and do all this stuff like that, and she'll go and she'll drive around in the little community, it's like a big circle, and she'll deliver food to people that, that, are, that, are, that are younger than her, <laughs> that are struggling, and that's what she loves to do. She's demonstrating Jesus to the people around her because she hears about, oh, I gotta do it, and she, she just bakes and bakes and bakes, and she's giving, 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 and she drives around. Her name's Katie. I love Katie. Katie's like incredible. You know, and I, you know, she's, she's my grandmother. We call her Katie because that's kind of, but, you know, but she's, she is my grandmother. And I love the fact that she lives Jesus out every day by loving her neighbors with the talent that God gave her. What is it that's given you? Because there's something that you had that God's going to use in a way to be able to reach people. But you've got to start with something. Start with a hello, a smile. The simplest step that you can take to love your neighbor is just to take a step. And then let Jesus open the door so that you can represent him with the next step that you take. Father, help us to really be able to take this commandment and step forward with it and love you by loving those around us. Father, the neighbors that are close to us, the neighbors that are far from us, whether at work, whatever, but Lord, let us not forget the people that you've placed us right next door to. And yeah, they may be cantankerous, they may be annoying. But Father, maybe it's because they're hurting. Maybe it's because they have no hope. Maybe it's because they've never met and experienced the love that you want to give them. Help us in some way to step out of our comfort zone, to just demonstrate Jesus to the people around us so that they can know you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, if you need prayer, we'd love to pray for you guys upstairs. Upstairs. Yes, up here. <laughs> Love you guys. We'll see yes, you next sir. week as we pick this up and continue. Can I, just, oh, say, can I yes. just say one thing? As you exit, you're going to see a table set up, and it's just that we need some help in two areas of ministry, if you would consider it. We need some help in our camera, on our camera, uh, one Sunday a month for both services, and in our parking lot, we need some parking lot attendance, just one service a month. Thank you. Have a blessed day. We love you guys.